book three chapters nineteen through twenty one of the consoling thoughts of st francis de sales by jean joseph Huguet. this librivox recording is in the public domain book three consoling thoughts on sickness and death chapter nineteen death of the countess de sales mother of the saint but oh my god my dearest daughter should we not in all things and everywhere adore the supreme providence whose counsels are always holy good and amiable behold how he has been pleased to draw from this miserable world our dearest and most excellent mother to have her as i confidently hope near himself and at his right hand let us confess my well-beloved daughter let us confess that god is good and his mercy endureth for ever and his wills are just and all his decrees equitable his good pleasure is always holy and his ordinances are most amiable as for me i confess my daughter that i experienced great grief on this separation for i must make the confession of my weakness after having made that of the divine goodness but nevertheless my daughter it was a tranquil grief though acute for i said with david i have been silent o lord and opened not my mouth because thou hast done it had it not been for this i would undoubtedly have cried out piteously under the stroke but it was not according to my mind that i should dare to do so or manifest any discontent under the strokes of a paternal hand which in truth thanks to its goodness i have learned to love tenderly from my youth but you would wish perhaps to know how this good woman ended her days behold then a little history of it for it is to you i speak to you i say to whom i have given this mother's place in my memento at mass without taking away that which you had before for i could not bring myself to do it so firmly do you hold that which you hold in my heart and thus you hold the first and the last place there this mother then came here in winter and during the month which she remained she made a general review of her soul and renewed her desires of well-doing with very great affection indeed and she went away the most contented in the world with me from whom as she said she had drawn more consolation than she had ever done before she continued in this good way until ash wednesday when she went to the parish church of torrens where she confessed and communicated with very great devotion and heard three masses and vespers during the day being in bed and unable to sleep she caused her maid to read her three chapters of the introduction to entertain her in good thoughts and desired her to mark the protestation to be made the following morning but god was content with her good will and disposed of matters otherwise for morning being come this good lady arose and while combing her hair suddenly she fell down as if dead my poor brother your child who still slept being informed of what had happened ran in his nightdress and lifted her up and helped her to walk and assisted her with essences imperial waters and other things which are recommended in cases of accidents so that she recovered and began to speak but almost unintelligibly so much had the tongue and the throat been affected a messenger came to me and i hastened immediately with the physician and the apothecary who found her apoplectic and paralyzed in one half the body her stupor was of such a nature that it was easy to awake her and during those moments of consciousness she manifested a perfect clearness of judgment using the hand that still remained sound and speaking very apropos of god and her soul sometimes she sought for the crucifix groping so suddenly had she become blind and kissed it never did she take anything without making the sacred sign over it and thus she received the holy oils on my arrival blind and drowsy as she was 
she caressed me much and said this is my son and my father and kissed me embraced me with her arms and kissed the hand to me before everything she continued in the same state for nearly two days and a half after which it was difficult to awake her and on the first of march she surrendered her soul sweetly and peacefully to our lord with a countenance of greater beauty than perhaps she had ever borne in life remaining one of the loveliest dead i have ever seen i have still to tell you that i had the courage to give her the last benediction to close her eyes and mouth and to give her the kiss of peace at the moment of her departure after which my heart filled and i wept over this mother more than i have ever done since i entered the church but it was without spiritual bitterness thanks be to god behold what passed chapter twenty the rapidity of time these temporal years pass away the months are reduced to weeks the weeks to days the days to hours and the hours to moments which are all that we possess but which we possess only in proportion as they perish the more perishable our existence the more amiable ought it to be to us since this life being full of miseries we should have no greater consolation than to know that it rapidly vanishes to give place to a holy eternity which is prepared for us in the abundance of the mercy of god and to which our soul incessantly aspires by continual thoughts arising from its own nature though it cannot hope to arrive there but by other thoughts more exalted with which the author of nature inspires us indeed i never consider eternity without much sweetness for i say how can my soul extend its thought to this infinity unless there is some kind of proportion between it and eternity but when i feel that my desire runs after my thought my joy takes an incredible increase for i know that we never desire with a true desire anything but what is possible my desire then assures me that i can possess eternity what remains to me more than to hope that i shall possess it and this assurance proceeds from the knowledge i have of the infinite goodness of him who would not create souls capable of thinking on and tending to eternity without giving them the means of attaining to it let us then often say everything passes and after the few days of this mortal life an infinite eternity will come little does it matter whether we have conveniences or inconveniences here provided that for all eternity we are happy a great soul sends all its best thoughts and affections forward to the infinity of eternity and being immortal it esteems too short all that which is not eternal too small all that which is not infinite and rising above the delights or rather the vile amusements of this life it keeps its eyes steadily fixed on the immensity of eternal goods and the vastness of eternal years oh how desirable is eternity at the cost of miserable and perishable vicissitudes let time flow by with which we flow on to be transformed into the glory of the children of god alas when i consider how i have employed god's time i am in pain lest he should not give me his eternity since he gives it only to those who use his time well o oh god the years pass away and run as a thread imperceptibly one after another dividing our existence they divide our mortal life and ending they end our days oh how incomparably more amiable is eternity since its duration is without end and its days are without nights and its contentments are without variation how much i desire that in a high degree you may possess this admirable good of a holy eternity 
what a happiness for my soul if god showing it mercy grants it also this consolation chapter twenty one we should abandon ourselves to god in this life and in death among the praises given by the saints to abraham st paul mentions this above every other that he believed hoping against all hope god had promised to multiply his posterity as the stars of heaven and as the sand on the seashore and notwithstanding gave him an order to sacrifice his only son yet abraham did not lose hope but believed that while obeying the commandment to immolate his son god would not fail to keep his word great indeed was his hope for he saw nothing on which to rely except the word of god oh how true and solid a foundation is this word for it is infallible abraham proceeded then with extraordinary simplicity to fulfill the directions of god for he made no more hesitation or reply than when god had told him to quit his country and his father's house walking three days and three nights with his son not knowing precisely whither he went carrying the wood of sacrifice his son asked him where was the holocaust to which he replied my son the lord will provide it o oh my god how happy we should be if we could accustom ourselves to make answer to our hearts when they are in fretfulness about anything our lord will provide for it and then to have no more anxiety or trouble than isaac for he was silent afterwards believing that the lord would provide what was necessary as his father had told him great indeed is the confidence which god requires we should have in his paternal care and in his holy providence but why should we not have it seeing that no person was ever deceived therein and no one confides in god without reaping the fruits of his confidence consider what our lord says to his apostles to establish them in this holy and loving confidence when i sent you into the world without purse without silver without any provision was anything wanting to you they say no go he says to them and be not solicitous for what you shall eat or what you shall drink or how you shall be clothed or how you shall speak when brought before magistrates for on every occasion my father who is in heaven will give you that which is necessary but i am so little spiritual someone will say i do not know how to treat with the great i have no knowledge it is all one go and confide in god for he says though a mother should forget her child yet will not i forget you for i bear you engraven on my heart and on my hands think you that he who is careful to provide nourishment for the birds of the air and the beasts of the field that neither sow nor reap will fail to provide all that is necessary for those who fully trust in his providence and who are capable of being for ever united with him who is the sovereign good we ought to know that to leave oneself is nothing else than to quit one's own will in order to give it to god for it will avail us little to renounce ourselves unless we unite ourselves to the divine goodness to act otherwise would be to imitate those philosophers who made admirable abandonments of all things and of themselves but only under some vain pretense of philosophy witness epictetus who being a slave by condition and his master wishing to set him free on account of his great wisdom would not accept his liberty one of the greatest blessings but remained as he was in slavery so poor that at his death he left only a lamp which sold exceedingly dear having belonged to so great a man as for us let us not seek to abandon ourselves 
unless to leave ourselves at the disposal of the will of god there are many who say to our lord i give myself entirely to thee without any reserve but there are few who embrace the practice of this renunciation which is nothing else than a perfect submission in receiving all kinds of events according as they happen by the order of god's providence as well affliction as consolation sickness as health poverty as riches contempt as honor opprobrium as glory i speak of the superior part of the soul for there is no doubt but the inferior part the natural inclination tends always more to the side of honor than to that of contempt to the side of riches rather than to that of poverty although no one is ignorant that contempt and poverty are more agreeable to god than honor and abundance let us live as long as god pleases in this valley of tears with an entire submission to his holy will i considered the other day what authors write concerning halcyons little birds that poise on the roadstead of the sea it is that they make their nests round and so closely pressed together that the water cannot at all penetrate them and there is only one little hole in the top by which they can breathe within they lodge their little ones so that the sea surprising them they float securely on the surface of the waves without being filled or submerged and the air entering by the little holes serves so nicely to balance these little chicklings and their little skiffs that they are never capsized oh how i desire that our hearts should be thus closely pressed together every chink stopped up so that if the torments and tempests of the world seize upon them they may not penetrate them and that there should be only one opening on the side of heaven by which to breathe to our saviour and this nest for what should it serve for the little fledglings of its maker for divine and celestial affections but while the halcyons are building their nests and their little ones are yet too tender to endure the shocks of the billows while god has care for them and looks down on them with pity preventing the sea from overturning and destroying them o god this sovereign goodness will also secure the nest of our hearts on account of its holy love against all the assaults of the world or will preserve us from being assailed by them ah how much i love those birds which are surrounded by water live on the air and see only heaven they swim like fishes and sing like birds and that which pleases me most is that their anchor is cast on the upper side and not on the lower to steady them against the waves may the sweet jesus vouchsafe to form us so that though environed by the world and the flesh we may live by the spirit that in the midst of the vanities of the world we may always look to heaven that dwelling amongst men we may associate with angels and that the foundation of our hopes may be on high in paradise let holy love be always and everywhere our chief love alas when will it consume our life and make us die to ourselves to live only to our saviour to him alone belong honour glory and benediction for ever since our inviolable purpose and invariable resolution tends continually to the love of god never are words of the love of god out of place i shall say nothing further to you either on the great abandonment of ourselves and of all things to god or on the departure from our country and the house of our parents no i do not wish to speak of them may god be pleased to enlighten us and to show us his good pleasure for at the risk of all that is in us we shall follow him into whatever place he leads us oh how good it is to be with him no matter where 
I think on the soul of the good thief. Our Lord had said that it would that day be with him in paradise, and no sooner was it separated from its body than it passed down to hell. Yes, for it would be with our Lord as our Lord descended into hell. It went thither then with him. O oh God, what did it think on while descending and beholding those abysses before its interior eyes? I believe it said with Job, Who will grant me, O oh my God, that thou mayest defend and preserve me in hell? And with David, No, I shall fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. So long as our resolutions live, I shall be untroubled. Though we die, though everything be overthrown, it matters little, provided they subsist. The nights are days when God is in our heart, and the days are nights when he is absent. End of Book 3, Chapter 21